Off you go, Ro. All Sorry, well, everyone. sorry, we're Walk so late. We had, yeah, we had technical issues. I don't know whose fault it was. Um, but welcome back, everyone, to another lockdown <laughs> live stream. Uh, I'm Charlie. This is Yanina, Alinka, Polly, Romani, David. Where's Babuni and the dog? Oh, he's, he's, he's sulking. Got, he's sulking. He doesn't love technical difficulties. Babuni and the dog is sulking because he, well, he can't stand the lack of professionalism. Tempers, <laughs> tempers flared around the, the dongle. <laughs> um, so normally we start off with asking what everyone has been up to this week, but I've kind of been watching ten minute long cartoons. And by ten minute long cartoons, <laughs> he means adventure time. Adventure time, and I think you know the the idea that you have to be doing something, and that even people are capable of doing something in this unnatural scenario is sometimes too much to hope for and I mean greater people are using this time to write their novels but also if you're just staring at the wall or whatever then that's a normal response as well but I thought we could talk about what we would be doing if we oh, weren't really? under lockdown. Romani what would you be doing if we weren't under lockdown um, right now? I'd have my first A-level in a few days. Yeah. I think 18th of May was going to be my first A-level. Yeah. So, yeah, like probably a having a breakdown over that. You'd be having a breakdown. She wouldn't be dodging a bullet. <laughs> she would be, she's, she's not going to get a chance to flower. Yeah. Uh, Yanina, what would you Call be up to if we weren't <laughs> being locked down right now? <laughs> I'd uh, probably be on a job. On job. Yeah. <laughs> Working. And for those watching who don't know, what would that job be? Um, set design. I mean, could well, be let's look at <laughs> oh, yeah, this. This, yeah. this is a clue. Flower <laughs> arrangements, still lives. Mm. Who knows? Every project is different. Now, yeah. Alinka had just started to get hello. Had just started getting into going to play groups. I suppose she'd be doing yeah. that. Yes. Um, she you? must be. She must feel she's the only baby in the world. Yeah. She never sees another baby. Yeah. She hears them sometimes and perks up her head like yeah. a meerkat. Yeah. Um, oh, what would you be doing? I would be. Um, well, actually, I, I thank God for the internet because I, I would normally be at literary festivals. I think Hay is coming up and I keep looking in the diary. There are all these things I would be doing because the book had just been published and I'd be meeting readers at these things and it's just so strange not meeting readers. So all week I've been not meeting readers. <laughs> but you have but, but I have because actually online people get in touch and it's really nice it's yeah. like it's the it's sort of it, it's it's you know in a, in the normal run of things meeting actual people would be the thing but in this period it's just lovely when um when you just have a conversation with someone yeah. like the book and you've you've forged different sorts of relationships <laughs> oh Alinka oh Alinka oh, no. what happened 
I think she wasn't allowed a box of matches, perhaps. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh yes. Lincoln, soon uh, you can have matches. Soon you can have matches, <laughs> baby matches. Um, yeah. You forge different sorts of, of relationships, like yeah. uh, with independent bookshops. Yeah, no, it's great. Like you do. I mean, it actually, I was thinking today, it would be so weird if this had happened before the internet. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess we're all having that thought. And actually, yeah, so for me, it's talking to readers and also just things like, you know, talking to independent bookshops and particularly it's been just so great having Newham books mm. who um, who just do kind of get in touch with me and ask for signed book plates yeah. and they're going all over the world. And the other thing about Newham books is they do an incredibly good job in their community, which yeah. is, I mean, they really do support a lot of charities. Mm. So in an amazing way. Papa, you're someone who you have actually been being quite productive in working on... Some Hundreds of things, and, keeping myself busy by obsessing on all sorts of yeah. things. One of the things and that we're going to talk about today is, is going through the lyrics of your old friend and ba- bandmate, Sid Barrett, and trying to get some sort of definitive version of those lyrics. Well, Just the lyrics have never actually been printed uh, properly. Um, Sid never wrote them down. They were never properly transcribed. Mm. Um, there's all sorts of different versions of all of them. If I interject, last week mm. we had someone writing in, who's a, a viewer who was 10 years old, yeah. and presumably we have some other people watching who, yeah. have, you know, pe- who don't actually know who, there, who, but... Sid Barrett, <laughs> who Sid Barrett is. Sid Barrett. So for a 10-year-old, could you please explain who he was? Philip Bryn. And your, yeah, it was, it was, called, was it Bryn who wrote yeah, it, it last Bryn, week? Yeah. Yeah. Hello, so Bryn, if you're Bryn. watching Hello, Bryn. I bet Bryn probably so Bryn. knows because yeah. he's a bright 10-year-old. Who was Sid Barrett and what was Sid, your relationship to him? Sid Barrett... Um, started Pink Floyd. He was its original leader. What was Pink Floyd? Pink Floyd is a pop group. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think most people actually do know that, yeah. Charlie, believe yeah. it or not. My mum didn't when I yeah. met you. Yes, she did. She did She called it Lily the Pink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Oh, we could just sing Lily the Pink. Oh, anyway, Sid Barrett was um, a, a friend of mine from when we were both about 14. We went on holidays together, hitchhiking around Europe. He founded Pink Floyd with Roger... Rick, Nick, um, Bob Close, other people in the very early stages. But he was its maverick writer and leader. He was a couple of years younger than all the other guys, but he was very, very bright. And um, somehow, very, very sadly, he lost his mind. One has There are all sorts of theories as to why he lost his mind, and certainly I su- suspect it was exacerbated by his drug use. But um, he was an enormous amount of fun. And... A brilliant um, poet, writer, I suppose you'd say. I think his writing is poetry. Um, others may disagree. How did you first meet him? Um, I mean, I genuinely I don't, know. don't know. I don't, the I don't to really this. do. I think through with some other people on a recreation ground in Cambridge, I would imagine. As did I you think, think so. didn't you do art classes with him? Um, I, I, I did art class with Roger and Sid when I was under 11. Oh, at wow. at Homerton, uh, <laughs> Homerton College, which was a teacher's training college in Cambridge. And, um, but I didn't know them then, either of them, at that point. But there is evidence that we were in the same class in a room, you know, about this size, on the same Saturday mornings. I stopped because I went, when I, after 11 plus, I went to a school which had school on Saturday morning, so I couldn't go anymore. What is your, what's your earliest memory then? If you can't remember when you first met, what's your earliest memory of, of meeting this person, Sid? Um, we just spent quite a lot of time together. I can't remember a first, yeah, the first meeting. It, 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 the Sheep's Green swimming place in Cambridge we used to meet, and there yeah. are other places that when were... You were how, when you were how old? 16, when you were something 16. like that. And then when I was 16, I went to the Cambridge, uh, Cambridgeshire College of Arts and Technology, um, and Sid went, had gone there a term earlier than me. Um, I went after one term of sixth form in my other school, before I realised it wasn't my thing anymore. Um, Sid went to the arts department and, and studied art for his A-levels at the Cambridge College of Arts and Technology. And I went there to do well, modern languages and we spent our lunch times um, sitting around. How did you around. first meet there? Oh, I already knew him. And when we got there, I, we said hi. And um, I used to go over to the art school where there were these great big art empty rooms where... Sid and I and one or two other people um, would meet and play guitars and learn songs. Mm-hmm. So was it a guitar thing? Uh, that that was, yeah. I mean, there may have been other rooms where other people met to do all sorts so of things. So did you used to take your guitar to college? 
Yeah. And Sid took his guitar to college. Yeah. God, that's so interesting. I bet people don't do that now. Why? Because they, they just... Because they just... Do you think they, they do? do? What, yeah. just, a, just at a normal sixth form centre? Yes. So oh. at sixth form, you boys and yes. girls... How many boys, how many girls? I... There were 3,000 people in the two years. I don't... I don't so I don't, fascinating. Why didn't you make a survey of them? Um, so... <laughs> so, anyway... So then you ended up being in a band together. I, um, we were very briefly, for five gigs only, in January 1968, maybe into February, um, in the band together. Uh, we played about five university dates from all over England. It was pretty strange. Mm. And then... Um, uh, the band decided that Sid was more of a liability than he was worth, and mm -hmm. um, we... What do you mean by the band? I mean... that I mean... Someone... Who? Said, oh as we were driving around West London, picking people up, about to head off to somewhere like Southampton for a gig, um, someone said, shall we pick Sid up? And someone else said... No, Come that's on, not you know who said it. Um, it was Mother, maybe a democratic decision. Stop, stop fishing. <laughs> uh, I, I actually don't know. I don't know the answer to that. And, um, and so then you, you, Sid was not in the band, at, but these lyrics that you've been going over stem from a period after that. Can you tell us about that, please? Uh, the lyrics that I'm doing are the entire career. Oh, the entire career, okay. Yes, so they include the first Pink Floyd album and a bit. Um, and uh, then, then there are two solo albums which um, I produced, the first one along with Roger, the second one with some help from Rick. Um, and we went through all these lyrics, um, Sid sang them, uh, but you know, he only sang them. He, he had maybe some notes scribbled on pieces of paper. Mm -hmm. Some of them, it, quite often, it felt like he was making them up as he went along. Mm -hmm. And it it's, 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 was very similar to the way that he talked. The lyrics are, you, you, you're struggling to get to grips with what he's meaning. It's not gobbledygook, any of them. They all definitely mean something to him, but there's a sort of a, a barrier um, between him and me and anyone else mm. that prevents us from being able to, be able to hear. It's like there's a glass wall between us and you can't quite make out what he's saying or meaning. And that's what it was like to talk to him in, in that period of time in 1969, 68, 69, 70, when we made these albums. Yeah. Anyway, the first album, there was a song called Octopus. I think I played drums on it and other things. God knows. It's, uh, anyway, the drums are bad what enough to be me. We are in 60, probably 69, maybe 68. I'm not 100% certain. Other people would know. But I can't quite tell. Anyway, there's a song called Octopus, and it has the line in it, uh, the madcap laughed at the man on the border. And I, when I was being asked about what they should call the album, and I asked Sid, and he said, you do something. And I said, let's call it the madcap laughs, because Sid was a bit, a bit bonkers, but... I think the word madcap doesn't mean mad. It means zany, if you like. And, and anyway, it, it sort of described um, uh, the lovelier part of Sid. Um, and so that's what it became called. I asked Sid if he was happy with that. And he said, absolutely fine. So we called it that. And I've, I've sort of recently read somewhere and checked on the tape, because I have some of the session, the multi-track session tapes, and I can solo these songs out, uh, the, the lyrics out, and listen to them. And I, I have been told that he says the mad cat laughs. Um, and so I named it wrongly mm -hmm. in 1969 as the mad cat laughs. Yeah. Anyway, I prefer the mad cat laughs yeah. and um, I shall sing it tonight. And, yeah. uh, and so you, I will um, still call it the mad cat And laughs. so you went back to those tapes that you have and you, and yeah. you made all the other instruments go away and it was just, just his, his voice. voice and he says the it. mad cat laughs. You know, there are, on on the on the track, mm. there are three three things of him singing it, and they're all up in the mix. Yeah, one of them sounds definitely like Mad Cat. One, two of them sound more like Mad Cat, but it's mm. you, you can't be a hundred percent certain. Yeah. So eventually, there, but okay. I, I I will get to more of these things and before this this. So what are they this, for? They're, they're for a book. They're for a book of Sid Barrett's lyrics. It would be nice if they were correct, but 
it's extremely hard to get them correct. And there, there are hundreds of versions of these things up online of people who have sat and listened. Mm. But um, they don't have the advantage that I have is one that I knew him and I knew how he talked. And the other, even bigger one, is that I've got the multi-track tapes and I yeah. can listen to his voice solo. So um, we will have something that I think will be pretty definitive. Yeah. There was another one that you said uh, about sort of people, an editorial decision that you had made about a tune they play called In Us Confide. What was that? What song is that from? Um, well, I, um, that is this same song. Uh -huh. uh, there's a, an, another line in it, uh, which is the old original favourite grand, Grasshopper's Green, Herbarian Band, and the tune they play is In Us Confide. Yeah. Um, in the versions of the lyric online, it has In Us Confide as capital letters mm -hmm. with quotation marks, as if it's a song that the band are playing that is called mm -hmm. In Us Confide. I think that is reading something that Sid did not necessarily say. Yeah. And I think that would be the wrong decision to make doing that. I, I can just as easily see that it says that the tune they played was confided in us. Yeah, which is so a nicer reading of it. I think it's a I nice think. reading. And I, I, you, you can't make assumptions about what someone else means. Yeah. So you have to do it the correct way. And that's... Yeah. Um, the way it'll be. <laughs> and he never wrote it down so you couldn't see if there were capital letters. No. Oh. I've just spoken today, actually, to Peter Barnes, who is, um, A music our, publisher. is our publisher. And he was our publisher from 1968 onwards. And his wife, Cora, was too. And they knew Sid very, very well. He was always popping into their office asking for another advance and things like that. And he knows all this stuff intimately as well. And he's going through it. He's going to give me a hand and okay. do some more checking up. So we're going to have uh, some, some questions later. If you've got questions, please get them in and we'll, 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 we'll try and respond to as many of them as we can later. We're going to have some music. We're going to have... Uh, Roman, he's going to do a poem. Um, maybe now we could have that Sid Barrett song you were just talking about. OK. We'll um, give it a go. And I have, I've actually got a copy of the album here, The Mad, the mad Cat Laugh, or as it now must be known, The Mad Cat. Maybe we should have a competition yeah. to win that album. Um, I don't know what the competition is. I don't know, David could set a competition. Competition. Um. And you could draw a cat on it. No, <laughs> for me it is going to remain the Mad Cat okay. Laughs, as is cat. the lyric in the song. Yeah. Oh, right. Now, you're not going to sing Mad Cat now? No. Oh. Ever. <laughs> Sid's not going to argue. Well. No, I'm not. I don't <laughs> like it as much. I don't like it as much either. Scattered needles, little minute gone, cough some clears his throat. Madam, you see before you stand, hey ho, never be still. The old original favorite grand, grasshoppers, green herbarian bat, and the tune they play is in us can find. So drip to heave and hold, up, down, to and fro. The seas will reach. 
reach and always see. So high you go, so low you creep. The wind it blows in tropical heat. The drones they throng on mossy seats. The squeaking door will always squeak. To up to down we'll never meet. So merry trip and go my side. Please leave us here. To rehearse too much. <laughs> and also, eggplant. What? Thank you. Well, a little ripple. Yeah. A few little cock ups in there, so I, I, I thought I, maybe I should have rushed did through. You sing, did you sing Mad Cats the first time? That's well, one of those arguments you'll yeah. always have. Mm. Well, Thank you for that. So we're going to have some questions. It's a bit high now. for me, actually. But Listen, I did tune the guitar down a bit. Listening to that. I mean, it's a lovely song and childlike, but also when you listen to the lyrics in the context of profound mental illness, it's mm. an extremely sad song. Yeah. Um, sorry to put it down on things. But you you uh, can sing it yeah. slowly and, yeah. and to give it a different feeling, and yeah. it has a very different sort of meaning to it. Yeah. Um, it can, yeah. Trip, trip to a dream dragon. So we've got some, anyway, some, yeah. some questions that have come in before and Whoa, some... We're being uh, some like it like it. Coming in. I don't know uh, like she it. seems to have livened her up quite a bit. <laughs> um, actually, my sister China if, and, and cousin Freya, if you're watching, Alinka is wearing the lovely outfit you sent, so thank you for that very much. It's <laughs> Look at that tongue. It's nearly as good as mine. Um, so... Uh, a question from Larry Kerrigan on Twitter. Will we be seeing a film adaptation of your book, Mama? Um, uh, yes. Yes, definitely. Great. I feel confident. <laughs> well, that's a bit awkward. That's the, that answers that. Great. Uh, we've got some questions that have come in live as well. Um, Cameron Eroch. Uh, David, what was the first ever song you learned to play on the guitar? Um, gosh. I can't. Oh, come on. Hang on, hang on. Just make one up. <laughs> make one up. Yeah. I, I remember going to um, a scout <laughs> club advice. thing where I went and took my guitar before I knew how to play it at all, the one I'd borrowed off my neighbour, and I just strummed the open strings all the way through something. That was my very first Did performance. Did you sing? Uh -huh. But it was a... No, I, just, I was just strumming the guitar, but it was literally just... <laughs> I didn't know how to play it. King Ganguly. Yeah, that sort of thing. Anyway, yes, that was pretty rubbish. Anyway, I... I... <laughs> Gosh, I can't remember. No, no, no I really come on, Carol, keep, keep, keep the speak memory. There, there were things from the Pete Seeger guitar tutor book, which yeah. I learned from. Um... Mm. When was the Let's... first time you Let's... played in front of other people and sang at the same time? Um, well, that would have been in the first band that I ever joined which was called The Newcomers um, and it was led by a drummer um, that idea. Um, anyway I, I, I was kind of did do some singing in that band how I was another singer how old were you? Oh my God, 17? Mother! What is wrong with you? <laughs> Let's what? just have a look. I don't know she, these things. She's Let's... my wife. <laughs> she uh, for twenty five years, yeah. and she doesn't and how know these things. How does that make things. you feel? <laughs> <laughs> let's have just let's just have a You're moment of silence. He's have... never asked me anything about. I have. That's <laughs> not the time. Well, we won't go there right now. Let's have a moment of silence and allow the memories to bubble up. Mm. Everyone, be quiet. Just let oh. just let him let the memories oh, bubble yeah. up. Bubble, bubble, bubble. <laughs> <laughs> there were so many songs that I learned. Could I please have some more wine, do you yeah. think? Uh, it's down here wine. beside you, darling. Here. Oh, can I have some more wine? Yeah, I think. Um, so the, the, the people are asking about the chicken. That we did a video uh, to tell think... people about this live stream, and they're asking about the chicken, chicken? that was on your head. Are they what sure? Um... <laughs> they must be mad. They're hallucinating. I don't know. Maybe I imagined. <laughs> What does she do? <laughs> a linker. <laughs> uh, it's all right. It's fine. It's fine. It's, it's just the headphone um, volume. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Yes. Yeah, so you had a you had a little chicken called Egg Puppy on your head, if you recall. I 
Uh, yeah. Jared Barnhard. Barnhard. That's a great name, Barnhard. Mm. Why is there a bird inside your house? Who cleans the poop? Um, well, the bird. The bird was born. It was a chicken. Then we have an incubator. Um, and it was born on Romany's birthday. 18th birthday. On Romany's 18th birthday, a little while ago. Um, and it has been being reared by us, as it has to be, unless you have the mother hen, but... We don't know who the mother we is. We're not quite sure who it is. It's sitting yeah. there, and it's got a lamp over it most of the time, keeping it warm, and it's yeah. now however many days it's old, a couple of weeks old it is. And in fact, strangely enough, another one hatched out this very morning. Woo! So, Egg Poppy has a sibling. Why? Yeah. why snappy Snaps one says, "Why is she a grey chick, not yellow?" Her well, sibling not, is not yellow. Not all chicks are grey. Are yellow. yellow. This one just yeah. happens to be a rather lovely colour of greys and blacks. Beautiful. Hope she keeps those colours. She's, she's an extremely clever it's, it's and and, uh, yeah. and charming chicken. Very actually, talented. yeah, very talented. Very talented, and, and we spend a lot of time talking she's to her. She's a few weeks old, and <laughs> I just say, "Egg Puppy." Jump and she just flies to my hand. It's well, incredible. Charlie has trained her. Yeah. So anyway, there we are. And the poop. Um, well, the poop is mostly in the cage, but thing, there was a little yeah. bit on the kitchen table yesterday. I think Charlie cleaned, I cleaned it, up. it up. Yeah. It's a very clean. Charlie's good at cleaning clean up chicken. bird poop. Yeah. It's a very clean chicken because yeah. Yunina noticed the other day that in its um, cage it just that it. Goes that, to yeah. What in Ra uh, Raphael Chiola? What is the name of that clever little bird? Her name is Egg Puppy, and the the one we believe its mother is Egg Dog. <laughs> um, so that believe answers that not. question. No further questions on that matter. Um, <laughs> so uh, that does bring us on to another thing to do with. Birds, uh, and we've got, I've been getting a few questions. Some viewers might know that uh, I had, uh, or we we had actually. Yeah, a, a, a member she of was our a family. sort of member of our family, a feathered member of our family, a magpie called Benzine, who four years ago yesterday, Yanina brought home. She'd found it. Uh, her sister had found it lying in the gutter. And we brought it home and nurtured it back to health, and then let it go, and it flew away, and then came back and. More than um, once. Many, many <laughs> times. We kept trying to let her go. She kept oh, coming back. Just the anxiety. Um, it was horrible. And no, she, she, I mean, this time last year, she left home for about a month and then turned up at the pub and scared the shit out of everyone working in the pub. Um, but earlier this spring, she sadly died. Um, very suddenly, it was a sort of sneeze one day and then off, her perch, off her perch yeah. the next, which... Does happen with birds. That's why canaries. She had a little cough for a little while. Canaries get, she got, get sent um, down coal mines. Mm. Yeah, um, but she was lovely. I mean, she was. She, yeah, and no, I feel you, really you sad. You opened your eyes to how well, you characterful. Well, open them too you wide if they were blue and, and yeah. like sapphires, because yeah. then she wanted yeah. to own them. But how characterful uh, birds could be. I mean, yeah. no bird will ever be just a bird again after having no. Done a it's true. I I madly talk to all other magpies. Yeah, but really. I'm really quite surprised that they don't come and No, land it is strange. It is I mean, really I still weird. try and get them to do that. Yeah. And offer them things that they do. I, I like to I take yeah. a lighter thinking that they're going to come if I flick the lighter. And yeah. Um, anyway, so that's, that's, that's some sad news that we've had. Um, and we're going to think of a way to try to memorialise benzene in a way that, that, that would be yeah. befitting a fellow. I've just uh, finished writing a book that's partly based on our our time together and and a few other things um which i didn't sort of plan for it to be a memorial to her but now it seems yeah. quite fitting so um, today would have been her fourth her fourth birthday and yeah. normally so yeah you were saying what would you normally be doing so normally she'd be having a party yeah and all her ah. friends all her friends would be coming yeah she'd be opening a little box Human containing friends. live worms and a little jellies with bugs inside yeah. them yeah. and on her second birthday I read a poem wearing goggles because she was trying to eat my eyes. Romany, she was trying to eat Romany's eyes. Actually, maybe, would you read... We're going to have one of Benzine's, the magpie's, favourite poems now. <laughs> Romany, would you yes. Would you read it? This is Two Legends from Crow, and it is by Ted Hughes. Okay. Oh, oh. I think it's Black was the without eye, black the within tongue, 
Black was the heart, black the liver, black the lungs, unable to suck in light. Black the blood in its loud tunnel, black the bowels packed in furnace, black too the muscles striving to pull out into the light. Black the nerves, black the brain with its tombed visions, black also the soul, the huge stammer of the cry that welling could not pronounce its son. Black is the wet otter's head, lifted. Black is the rock plunging in foam. Black is the ghoul lying on the bed of the blood. Black is the earth globe, one inch under, an egg of blackness, where sun and moon alternate their weathers. To hatch a crow, a black rainbow, bent in emptiness over emptiness, but flying. Thank you, Ronia, that was very beautiful. That was from Ted well, Hughes's yes, collection well. of crow poetry uh, that Benzine always loved. I've got a, a, a question from Louise Allen Jones, uh, who's asked this actually many oh, times sure. over previous episodes. <laughs> Charlie, what <laughs> is your book called, etc.? Um, the book that I've written about me and Benzine and Various other things. It's about fatherhood and birds, and it's called Featherhood. Um, yeah, which yeah. started off as a as a as a joke, but then mm. a joke that got taken seriously. I keep so, being told by yeah. people that it's a really great title. Yeah, well, good. Well, uh, then it is. And it shall be. <laughs> I think yeah. it is now. The voice of the people is the voice of God. Absolutely. So should we have? Let's and see feather if, is a really good word. Feather is a lovely word. Yeah. Um, should we have another song in a bit? Let's see if there's anything else that's come in. Um, blah, 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 blah. No, no one said blah, 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 blah. <laughs> uh, Okay, well, if any more questions come in, we'll come back to them. Um, but Papa, perhaps another one more song. Will you tell us a bit about this song before you... Um, well, this is um, a song called Dominoes, and I guess it's about people sitting around. But you recorded this song? Yes. Do you, do you remember that? Yes, yes mm. I do. I, I, I did play the drums on this one, definitely. So this is um, Sid in a studio, out of his brains? Uh, this is Sid in Abbey Road, number two studio, recording um, uh, some of the unusual moments we kept on that first album. Um, when Did he come yeah. on his own? To we the need studio? to speed things up because we have to. We have to, be out of we have to clap before the eight. Yeah. NHS we've got eight. Twelve minutes. So yeah. Okay. Um, I often took him to the studio and brought him back because we live next door right. in Earl's Court. Anyway, uh, but it's a song. Um, it sounds like a, a lockdown song. People sitting around, trapped with nothing much to do except play dominoes. <laughs> it's an idea song. In my tears, my dreams Don't you want to see a proof Life that comes of no harm You and I, you and I and dominoes The day goes by time on domino a day so dark so warm life that comes of no Pretty hair. 
Stretch out your hand, glad feels in an echo for your way. It's an idea someday. In my tears, my dreams. Don't you want to see a proof? Life becomes of no harm. Dominoes, the day goes by. And do, this is why we yeah. love you so How does it do it in the actual track? Does it just fade out? I think it fades, fades out. Fades yeah. out. What's your favourite? I love that song. What's, what is your favourite Sib song? You, Mama, first. Oh, God, you can't spring that on me. Um, <laughs> Terrapin. I love mm. Terrapin. Popsicle? Um, I think Domino's is one of those. Domino's. Yeah, no, I'm that. Yeah. So, that. There's something very still about it. Mm. I love it. That about wraps it up for this week. Next week, we're going to apparently be on actual television um, on a show called Front Row Late with Mary Beard, and that show will be being broadcast at 7pm British time on BBC Two. Next Thursday night. Uh, next Thursday night, 7pm. Um, and if you can't get BBC where, where you are in the world, I imagine... We'll be able to post a video or something. I don't actually yeah. know the technical details, but try to tune into BBC Two if you so desire. And see you there and then. Thank you very, very much for tuning in. And sorry again about the late arrival. It's the dongle. We'll song. sort out our dongle. We're going to have a word with the dongle. <laughs> Well done, everyone. I think it was really lovely. And well done, everyone. It is sad. When you listen to the lyrics of Octopus, it yeah. is sad. Yeah. Yeah, all his songs are so yeah. sad.